ocean beach and trees in a thick fog. Text, following in the footsteps of Lewis and Clark. Natural Science Explorations by the National Park Service North Coast and Cascades Network Inventory and Monitoring Program. Satellite view zooming in closer to Oregon down to Acom River. In the fall of 1805, after traveling 3,700 miles over land and water, the Corps of Discovery led by Lewis and Clark arrived at the mouth of the Columbia River in what is now part of Oregon and Washington. Green trees and ferns. Here they encountered the lush, temperate rainforest of the Pacific Coast and established relations with the native peoples of the lower Columbia River region. Fort Clatsop made from logs. Fort Clatsop was constructed for winter quarters, and after settling in, the expedition went about exploring the area. President Thomas Jefferson instructed the expedition to make scientific observations, and the team spent hundreds of hours making detailed notes in their journals and collecting specimens. Men wearing period clothing examining a fern frond near a candle over a journal. These original observations from 1806 provide a snapshot of what the flora and fauna were like over 200 years ago. River with swimming fish. Journal entry with a similar fish drawn across the center of the page, corner to corner. Modern scientists find this information invaluable for understanding how the landscape has changed. Men in period costume using a rope to measure a tree. Modern day, a man and woman measure the tree with a tape measure. The National Park Service uses similar techniques today to understand the ecosystems in and around Lewis and Clark National Historical Park. Men in period costume looking closely at a plant with very large leaves. Lewis and Clark described dozens of animals and plants near Fort Clatsop and carried nine herbarium samples with them on their return journey. Woman unlocking cabinet and removing a file folder. Today, the park's herbarium includes samples of these same species, as well as 134 other specimens. Opening the folder to reveal a plant sample pressed between paper. Changes in forest and vegetation health can be more readily detected if you have a good understanding of the landscape as it was and as it is now. Scientists walking through wooded area looking at plants and trees. The National Park Service Inventory and Monitoring Program conducted an inventory of plants and created a vegetation map of the park. Looking through binoculars. This field work combined with computer analysis produced a map with 21 vegetation types and three land cover types. Vegetation map of Fort Clatsop. The park includes globally rare plant communities such as Sitka Spruce Swamp, Red Fescue Coastal Headlands, Pacific reed grass that lives on the cliffs above salty ocean spray and marshes of Lingby sedge and Pacific silverweed. The map informs restoration actions, delineates wildlife habitat, and serves as a baseline to track changes over time. Frog hopping on moss covered ground. On computer screen, aerial view of vegetation. While the vegetation map provides a one time look at conditions, park staff also monitors how forests are changing over time. Large tall trees. The forests include Sitka spruce, a long lived species that grows only along a narrow band of the northwest coast of North America. Some of the trees that were alive during Lewis and Clark's visit are still living on parklands at Cape Disappointment. Tall evergreen trees surrounded by green plants. Sitka spruce is vulnerable to rapid changes in its environment because of its limited growing conditions. Man holding clipboard in front of spruce. National Park Service scientists are monitoring older Sitka spruce forests. The monitoring team is studying tree mortality, recruitment, and growth through detailed long-term observation. These indicators of environmental change will help the team understand if the ecological integrity of these forests, dating back to Lewis and Clark, can persist into the future. The team's monitoring has provided managers with some good news. The Sitka spruce forests are healthy and ecological indicators are within the range of natural conditions. Large herd of elk with light and dark brown for grazing on green grass. The abundance of Roosevelt elk was a critical factor in the party's decision to winter at Fort Clatsop. The Corps of Discovery shot 130 elk during that winter to replenish their supplies. Men in period costume and had arranging an elk hide over a wooden fence. Elk was their main source of food, and elk also provided hides for clothing and tallow for candles. Group of elk lie in the grass under the sun. More than 200 years later, visitors to the park can see the descendants of those elk. Woman wearing gloves near a small red flag stuck in the ground. Since 2008, the National Park Service, in collaboration with U.S. Geological Survey, has been monitoring elk populations in the Fort Clatsop unit of the park to detect changes in elk population and use of habitat. 
Several elk nearly camouflaged in the forest. There are multiple ways to count elk. Under a dense forest canopy, elk can be difficult to be seen by air or from the road. So the science team at Lewis and Clark head out into the forest to count elk droppings or pellets at a systematic grid of plots. Woman in gloves carrying a long metal pole. Analyzing the results from neighboring plots produces a map that shows how elk are using different parts of the park over time. Informing managers of key elk habitat. Map showing how elk use habitat. Since elk cross property lines and boundaries at will, the park also conducts routine morning roadside surveys that encompass private and public lands outside the park. Driving past fields. Women hold up binoculars. With rural and urban development that fragments the habitat, these methods help track how elk respond. Busy road with several vehicles. Using observation and science to monitor vital signs in the park is essential to the National Park Service's mission of preserving natural and cultural resources for the enjoyment of the American public. Wooden sign with silhouettes of Lewis and Clark. Fort Clatsop, Lewis, and Clark National Historical Park. Counting elk, monitoring the health of old-growth spruce forests, and measuring the density and diversity of vegetation are just a few examples of how park scientists are measuring the status of park natural resources. Man with hat flipping through journal looking at a frond. A modern-day scientist opens a folder with a sample of the same frond. The early natural science work of Lewis and Clark, right here at this location, gave us valuable data about the nature of this place. The work that park scientists and managers are doing now helps to ensure the ecological integrity of this landscape into the future. Tall evergreen trees, green grass, small creek, Text, North Coast and Cascades Network Inventory and Monitoring Program works with EB's Landing National Historical Reserve, Fort Vancouver National Historical Site, Lewis and Clark National Historical Park, Mount Rainier National Park, North Cascades National Park, Olympic National Park, San Juan Island National Historical Park. Image from the Journal of Lewis and Clark used with permission of the American Philosophical Society.